too many chefs, right? <laughs> we are we are back. Everyone's pushing buttons. I was like, I don't want to turn off the webinar by accident. Tyler, are you there? I can see you, but I can't hear you right now. Are you Tyler talking to talk to us? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> Try uh, mute your, uh, unmute yourself, please. Hello, 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 hello. There he goes. Hey, uh, morning. Uh, you are one of the smartest people I ever met. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm. I'm. Not, I'm just saying. I mean, first of all, Tyler, welcome to uh, to uh, Smart Factory uh, USA edition. Uh, thank you for participating, um, and thank you for a good dinner last time. I think it was in Brussels. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little jealous. Just saying. yes, you're always jealous when there's food on the I table. I know that. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, Tyler, um, as people are hopefully getting on board, and don't worry, we will make sure that the replays will get a wide audience. So uh, that is the uh, least important right now. This is what we call um, content creation, right? Yes. So this is all about what you say. It's all about the conversation. It's all about how we get the message across. One thing I would like to ask you about, you and George, when you became partners with Tilly Labs a couple of years ago or employees or and partners with them, uh, you came from ESCO, right? It must have been quite a challenge to go from a large company and then decide to move all their workload and all their, the qualities that you guys have into a company that by all means, could at that time be seen as a startup. How has that been? Yeah, it's been, uh, wow, it's it's been quite a, a transition. It's, uh, you definitely wear a lot more hats. You're a lot more hands-on um, from really all all aspects of, uh, of, of the company, right? I mean, you're, you're dealing course directly with uh, customers like I always was doing previously but um, having a lot more impact and say on uh, you know driving customers and driving leads and in marketing um, here in the US and, and globally really um, and getting to, to work with a lot of really 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 good and really smart partners and in, in resellers and distributors that um, you know that, that that's something that was typically handled by um, a different department or a different person altogether. So it's it's good. It's um, it's definitely a lot of work, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a whole bunch of fun. We've got fantastic mm -hmm. products here. Such a good, smart group of people uh, mm -hmm. here at Tilia Labs, and we're growing, mm -hmm. and we're growing really quickly. So mm -hmm. um, good to hear. Been yeah. a blast. As you know, I have a very special personal relationship with both uh, Diego and Saken. You uh, love Tilia Labs. You're always talking I, about Tilia Labs. I love, love them. them. And, 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 and I, I don't know if you know the story, uh, Tyler, but actually uh, when <laughs> it was kind of fun because uh, we got a, a commission uh, to, be, to do a job with uh, Diego in, uh, when he was working with SmartPress, uh, the Bernard Group in, in Chanhassen. And uh, with together with in focus, and uh, when we got there, uh, <laughs> I didn't know Tilly Labs at all. Uh, I didn't know Diego at all either. And then I figured, and yeah. and and he and and I think that what what I like about Tilly Labs is that you are, regardless of the brilliant technology that you develop, no question about that. You you, in my opinion, are one of the few companies that have a tremendous growth, and at the same time, you are able to keep both feet on the ground and make sure that you are on the customer side and really try to understand their needs. And I think that often you go back to DA, uh, to, to uh, Saken and Scott and say, it would be. It's really uncommon when you see, you know, the, the CTO and, and lead developers uh, of a software company want to understand what their rate of, of, change in in hardware and um you know on on the print production side uh they they do they um they get their feet on the ground and they get our developers feet on the ground mm -hmm. so that when you're sitting there developing and writing code 
uh, it, it's purposeful and it makes sense as to why you're doing that. You know, you go and you listen to what the customer is doing. You see what they're doing. It's, you know, it costs some money, sure, to go and, and fly your developers around the world to go see these challenges and new equipment. But oh, yeah. uh, at cool. the end of the day, it, it, it's just, it, it makes such a big difference when, um, you know, you're, you're, you're developing and understanding why you're developing products to solve challenging problems. I mean, it, it makes such a difference. I mean, workflow is such a catch-all phrase right now. And, um, you know, one of the most important things, especially when you're dealing with engineers and programmers, I mean, I'm a print customer, so believe me, I don't speak that language at all. And I, um, even working with a printer, I don't want to be backed into a technology, you know, um, the way it needs to be done and this, that, and the other thing. And you have such an advantage of being nimble to be able to say, okay, we developed this with best practices in mind based upon everybody we know and everything, uh, our customers and everything we know what they do. But now we also have the ability to tailor something specifically for your problem to address your problem, to address your need, to help the next person who doesn't even realize that, that that's a problem for them uh, yeah. preemptively. So uh, kudos to you. And I just have to echo that uh, Morton is really a neutral person, which is why I adore him. But Telia Labs is always on the top of his love list. So for that, you have my undying love. And the Printiverse salutes you, Telia, long and prosper. Yeah, yeah, wow. that's great. Yeah, we, we always uh, appreciate Morton and, and uh, everything that Morton provides to the industry and, and to his customers. Um, yeah, Inkish is such a great company, so. Thank you very I'm much. Gonna, I'm going to actually exit the screen and go into the chat um, and uh, have a great session, and I'll see you guys when it's over. That's perfect. Uh, Tyler, just before you get started with your presentation, um, you're saying that you are successful and you are growing right now, and, and that is despite the pandemic. Do you see there's a pattern in, uh, in uh, the need of uh, uh, automation and all these things as part of the pandemic? Because uh, the printing companies that understand that the future will be more automated see this as an opportunity to get started or or how do you see that yeah yeah i think this uh the the pandemic has really kind of opened up uh a lot of the printers and converters eyes as to how you know you really kind of start to dig uh on how you continue to drive business right like you can't um in, in a lot of cases, like a lot of our retail customers really took a big hit in store yeah. signage and in store, you know, retail type work for obvious reasons took a, took a big hit. So you have to transition, right? And um, it's times like these that, uh, you know, kind of really separate um, who's going to be the the next printer of, of the future. Um, and it, it sure it shuts a lot of doors, but it also opens up a lot of opportunities, you know, for companies to transition, pivot and uh, become the leader in in a, a whole new way that you know they they weren't thinking about before. So we've seen our customer base, uh, man, customers that were doing a lot of uh, in store retail or doing a lot of um, uh, you know uh, trade show type work, um, completely move to just manufacturing masks. They've never <laughs> manufactured a mask in their life, right? Mm -hmm. And and there's a need and uh, they pivot, transitioned, used their equipment and, you know, started to to make, you know, a, a, or capture additional customers. So and it's funny that you mentioned uh, mentioned that thing, because I think that's kind of funny. I don't know if you've seen uh, some of the presentations we have also done it before the Smart Factory with Diego. But that is like, you know, one of the things that I find quite interesting in, in the in the history of uh, of Tilly Labs is also that it started as as uh, lay flat products. Uh, it developed into uh, multiple pages products, into label or segments, now into commercial print into. I mean, you have your company has also you know, being on a journey when it comes to 
uh, the applications that you can output. And, and of course, I, I expect that you will probably, even though we want it to be as, uh, as educational as possible, I, I hope that you will also talk a little bit about the advantages of, of, uh, of, uh, of your software. Because I think that yeah, Deborah is right that I always try to be vendor neutral in all my opinions and stuff like that. I, and I think there's a lot of great software out, out there. Also something that competes on par with you guys. But I think that 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 uh, one of the things that I have paid attention to uh, from when I met Diego, for example, was also the fact that for printing companies who are uh, having a large volume and and a lot of different smaller print jobs, the 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 automation and the API, uh, mm -hmm. the 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 artificial intelligence in in the imposing jobs and and how you can actually. Uh, cost benefit, which uh, equipment to use. And also I think that you were almost the first company in the industry to support IoT with, uh, with, uh, was it uh, SwissQ or? Uh, Zoom. Sorry? It was Zoomed. No, it was Zoomed, yeah, precisely. Yeah. That's the neighbor, neighbor to, to mm -hmm. Swiss yeah. yeah. So I, I, I'm just thinking that, that, that you, it's, it's not just because I like the guys, uh, and, and the, and the woman in the company. It's because I like, I like the, 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 the transition and how you adapt to the market needs. And I think that some companies can learn from you because I remember one of the first stories I wrote about, uh, Tilly Labs. I know it was not intentionally, but that was also the fact that you were in a situation where, uh, now you have, company from you shown right i mean you you can't be alone right yeah. <laughs> no okay no what i'm what i'm just saying is that 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 you know the, the bigger the companies get sometimes it's it, the, the process of adapting to the market needs become more and more complex and though you have successfully grown to me it still seems that you are in a position where you still are back to the roots and the dna and what i wanted to say the last thing i promise you was also the fact that you were able to to live the distributed office. You don't have like a H uh, uh, headquarter. You you, how does that work actually? Is it good for you or I mean you're working from home, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, right now we don't we don't have much of a choice, right? But um, it was uh, it, it's it's been that way really since um, you know the 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 beginning of the company. We've got. Uh, employees scattered all across the us right we've we've got employees down in tennessee and south carolina and minnesota and uh all across um the globe you know up, up in up in canada at our hq um in in the uk and in a couple in japan so um yeah so we have, try so you have become a global player without having a a formal kind of headquarter where you have staff just sitting and doing accounting, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's never never been the case. Uh, uh, that's good. Yeah, well, uh, I'm taking all your time. I can see your colleague Sean has. Uh, Sean, are you there? Oh, hello, guys. Hey, Sean. I Do was you have just a trying to listen in? So. <laughs> oh, okay, but you uh, requested to speak, so welcome. Oh, did I? Sorry, I didn't. Know that. <laughs> <laughs> should I kick? Should I kick you out, or what? You can. Man. Okay, I do that. Okay, I just kick showing up. Uh, are you familiar with everything? Are you comfortable doing your presentation, whatever you need? Yeah, I think so. I might. I might just make sure that you stick on. So uh, of course, of course, I would never miss. Yeah, it. yeah. Don't worry. I will be. I will be listening, and I will turn off my camera and microphone, and then we do Q and A when when you're done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to start my presentation, and then I'll. I'll shut my camera off while I'm presenting, and then I'll at the end I'll, I'll flick it back on. Sure. Um, sure. Dur during the presentation, Morton, there's there's a a bit of audio. So um, if you don't hear it, just speak up. I'll, I will speak I'll up. Yeah. Mention... But you're sharing your screen, right? Yep. I'm sharing my screen. Um, there's been no issues uh, during the the day with the, with the shared screen and audio. So I will I will I will just uh, turn on my audio and let you know if there's any problems. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. So let me share my screen here. Okay, Martin. I see your you, screen. You can see my screen. Okay, great. Yeah, you just have you, to. Yeah, it just. Yeah, now I see it full screen. So you just take it away from there. Full screen. Okay, you you can hear me. 
I can hear you as well. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Well, yeah. Hello, and and thank you all uh, for joining. Um, Morton, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm gonna just make sure um, my Slack is turned oh, off. Here. Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> you will get a lot of information, right? Yeah, it's going a bit crazy right <laughs> now. So cool. Turn this guy off. There we go. That should just hush that up. Okay. Full screen. Okay, Morton, do you see it? Yes, I do. Great. Awesome. All right. Hello. Yeah. Thank you uh, for joining our, our Smart Factory presentation on AI driven production automation. So, you know, when, when we were asked to present, uh, we, we kicked around a few ideas on really kind of, you know, how do we want to educate um, the, the viewers on who we are um, and also make it so that uh, the viewers understand, you know, not just who, who we are as a company, but what our products are doing. Um, but at the same time, we wanted not to just give a bunch of information about us. Um, so we also thought it would be good to work with one of our uh, recent uh, follow-up customer interviews that our marketing team did and share with uh, the viewers as we as we start progressing through the slide deck, um, you're gonna hear from our, our recent customer of ours, uh, Citycom, and uh, the, the VP of production there is a guy named Mike Oaks, really good guy, uh, great business over there at, at Citycom uh, in Columbus, Ohio. And we thought it would be interesting to share their feedback um, as we kind of progress through and understand their problems, what they're facing and how we address those challenges. So it might be a little bit different than a, a normal presentation, but hopefully it's uh, educational and um, enjoyable. So yeah, just brief introduction of myself. I'm Tyler Thompson. I'm the solutions director here at Tilia Labs. And I've been in the industry since graduating from university at Clemson, where I got a, a bachelor's of science degree in graphic communications. I actually studied printing and packaging. Um, there's, a, there's a program, several programs here in the US uh, that focus on, on the graphic arts and packaging industries. Graduated there in 2012. And then um, as, as Morton and I were discussing earlier, started my career at ESCO. Um, had held several roles there after graduation uh, and was at ESCO for about six years, seven years. Um, technical roles, sales roles. Um, when I was at ESCO, I then went and got my master's of science degree in computer information systems from Denver University and then joined the, the team here as a uh, director of solutions at Tilia Labs in uh, 2018. So I'm based in South Carolina, and I can be contacted uh, at the email below there. So the, um, really any printer challenge, especially when, when it comes to digital printing. Um, so I like to understand when I'm talking about anything or when I'm listening to anything, I like to understand, at a, um, like I said, throughout the presentations, you're going to hear audio clips of uh, interviews that our marketing team did throughout this presentation. Uh, directly from from their VP of production, and then I'll take a deep dive into uh, the customer's challenges uh, at a technical level. We'll talk about um, the the challenges they were facing, and then the solutions that we provided to address those challenges. So um, the problem: How do we maximize a larger sheet size? And at the same time, how do we reduce time in pre press? So uh, our our client approached us with these, these two kind of main challenges. I'm, I'm getting a larger press. I'm purchasing a larger now sheet size. Uh, and with this larger sheet size comes difficulties of um, feeding that larger sheet size. But I don't want to increase my time in pre-press and in, in pre-production. I want to decrease my time in pre-press and pre-production. Uh, so let's, we'll, we're gonna start in, um, uh, Morton, if you could let me know, um, I'm going to switch the slide and, and we're going to uh, listen to Mike Oaks discuss his challenges. Um, mm -hmm. Let me know if you can hear this. Mm, I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, this is Mike. Um, Mike Oaks is uh, the partner and VP of, of production at Citycom in Columbus, Ohio. And let's hear what he has to say. Since we bought the company in 2012, we've known 
we have to automate. And we've been trying and we've been taking different routes and sometimes we've stepped left when we should have stepped right. But, you know, with Phoenix, it was the first real step forward towards our automation goals. We had a different means of layout for every device we used. If it's in our small format or a large format, there was a different means of laying it out. If it was a mailer, a direct mail piece or a static piece, we would choose two different means to impose it. When we were looking at Phoenix, were we even thinking about, hey, we want to bring together our wide format layouts and our small format layouts and solve kill two birds with one stone? We weren't even thinking about that until you guys showed us that we could do that. So this kind of goes back to what, what Deborah, I don't know if, if uh, any of that will be reviewed, but our, our, our discussion right before we jumped on this presentation was, was about identifying challenges that, you know, you potentially uh, as a, as a printer didn't even know you, you had. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, th there, there were a couple, you know, key uh, takeaways or, or challenges um, that we heard from CityCom. Uh, Pre-press in positioning for a larger sheet size. Uh, they 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 were very interested in further automation, right? With the the purchase of what you're about to see, their their new press that they bought, um, and they wanted a streamlined way to manage in positioning for a multitude of different uh, printing types and printing equipment, right? Whether it's direct mail or sign in wide format. Um, so those are the challenges in the solution. Uh, again, going back to what I like, I like to know what's the challenge, what's the solution? The solution uh, that we presented, um, Mike and CityCom, uh, addressed both of, of these challenges. Um, and we did that by implementing artificially intelligent imposition and planning software, Tilia Phoenix. So what Phoenix is capable of doing is Phoenix is capable of deriving the most cost-effective print layout using AI simulations, which eliminates really the, the need for a human or a manual um, you know, uh, intervention in pre-press when imposing jobs for uh, a wide format press, for a small format press, for a digital or a, a conventional press. And just Quick, quick introduction of, of who we are and, and really what, what we do here at Tilia Labs. We uh, here at Tilia Labs, really our, our mission is to equip printers with smart technology forward planning software that delivers measurable financial impact uh, to their bottom line in a modern and easy to use software platform. It's pretty simple. We want to gear you with uh, easy to use modern uh, intuitive software that will help drive your costs down. So our AI-driven planning and imposition software, Tilia Phoenix, is being used in production uh, by our customers every day, and it's saving them money. It's it's helping them plan smarter and and solve some of the industry's you know most challenging problems. So why did we start the company uh, back in 2012? Uh, so we're, we're relatively newer to the uh, printing and packaging industry, um, you know, but about eight years now. Um, but back in 2012, our, our co-founders realized that there was a big need to develop a modern tool for print and packaging and position. Um, you know, a, a, a tool that goes beyond the traditional just step and repeat, you know, number around and number across. Uh, a tool that's, you know, smart enough to handle the everyday challenges of, of conventional printing uh, and conventional production today, uh, as well as a tool that, you know, was equipped for the future, a, a tool that addresses challenges of, of the digital production as well uh, as the conventional production. So digital production, meaning digital print, meaning digital finishing, uh, you know, lasers, uh, digital cutting tables in any other you know, future median uh, in our industry for digital production. So you know, what, what, what our co-founders noticed at the time was there was this the, you know, constant advancements in, in print and in packaging production equipment and hardware that was quickly and still is quickly being brought to market, 
But the software in our industry uh, was simply not keeping up with this pace, right? We were we were trying we were converting on you know uh, I, I look at like Landa, almost a spaceship looking uh, modern piece of printing equipment using our you know archaic in software that was developed back uh, you know in in early two thousands nine you know in, in the nineties. Um, so it was back in 2012, it was clear that smarter, more modern software was needed to facilitate this transition um, for our industry into this digital on demand, digital, you know, um, finishing and digital print dynamic uh, and positioning. So that is why, um, you know, the company started and that's how the company started. It was really, you know, to to manage short, dynamic, digital print and packaging production uh, with software that leverages, you know, new technologies that exist today, like AI and, and open APIs, so that we can equip the printing industry with, you know, calculated decisions to help determine what the most cost-effective way of running your jobs is gonna be. So that's us, the client, CityCom. CityCom is uh, a print shop built on relationships, like many of uh, the printers that we see all around the world. Um, they're based in Columbus, Ohio. They were founded in, in the 1980s. Uh, they operate as a what they consider a one-stop shop for their 3,000 active uh, clients. Delivering um, across you know diverse industries from from healthcare to to retail, so they do a lot of different things. They service a lot of different customers, and uh, they're a family-run business. They're in their second generation of ownership. So um, Mike, who who we, we will keep talking to throughout the presentation, uh, is the second generation owner, and in Citycom prides itself on delivering high quality products on time and on budget, so that they're customers can focus on their business and not focus, of course, on their printing needs. Um, but, you know, because uh, CityCom services such a diverse customer base, CityCom operates, you know, uh, large format printers and flatbed printers, uh, small format, you know, copy, copiers, um, working with signage work and, and small format digital printers for their traditional commercial work. And then CityCom recently purchased a larger B2 press sheet uh, with the KM1 because they wanted more throughput, um, lower ink costs, and in their mind, inkjet technology is the future. So um, if you're not familiar with the KM1, it's a 23 by 29 B B2 press sheet. So it's a, it's a much larger press sheet than what they were used to before with their 19 you know, A4 press presses that they've always been using. Um, and they bought it again. They wanted more throughput. They wanted, uh, they, they saw that the print quality, you know, with digital inkjet was was to a point where they thought, you know, they were moving from commercial print into, into uh, more and more digital print. Um, and they felt that the, the Conoco Minolta's inkjet technology uh, proved to be um, satisfactory in their print quality. And um, the speed and the size were, were very intriguing and uh, yeah, let, let's well we can we can hear it from uh, from Mike himself, but in in their mind, digital inkjet was the future. We see inkjet as the future. There's there's no doubt in our minds that everyone's going to be running inkjet sooner or later. The KM1 offered more control over our ink costs and our substrate costs, and we were always trying to go bigger. The more real estate we have, the more work we can get on the sheet and uh you know benefit from that so um with a larger press of course um and with faster throughput capabilities citycom quickly started to face challenges in workflow and uh these challenges, of course, needed addressed because um, now that you've got this beast of a printer that can print faster than you've ever been able to print before, you have to now feed the beast, right? You have to get your work um, efficiently through your shop uh, without, you know, uh, generating layouts manually, without spending time on jobs. Um, and uh, you want to now, of course, like, like you heard from Mike, you want to take advantage of the larger sheet size. You want to take advantage of the larger real estate. Um, so, you know, what they found themselves doing, um, 
they were, you know, they were at one one point they were used to uh, imposing their jobs on an, on an A4, a 13 by 19 sheet, with traditional, you know, imposition tools. They were just using the fiery rip at the time, right? And when with a smaller sheet size like a 13 by 19 and A4 sheet, you're typically only just doing one job at a time. So it's pretty easy to just, uh, you know, use your traditional imposition tools to manage your your pre-production in uh, in that smaller format, right? But um, with a larger sheet size, Citycom found themselves manually imposing jobs in Illustrator because they have more real estate. They didn't have any pre-press tools to accommodate for this larger real estate uh, to try and marry up multiple jobs on a sheet. Um, so they found themselves in Illustrator doing this manually, and uh, that became their bottleneck. So you know, we asked Mike uh, about these these challenges, and and here's what what Talking Mike said. You know, they were interested in what we were doing for imposition, so we knew we needed something. Uh, we were also, you know, looking at our prepress and how they were getting bogged down uh, with the amount of work we were losing, valuable production time. Uh, because jobs would sit in pre-press, uh, and they were kicking butt, man. They were they were pushing jobs out as fast as they could. But you get to a point where, you know, you can only one person can only do so much. <clears throat> so, another uh, challenge for Citycom was the multiple imposition tools. Um, that were required for their different presses and in, in different uh, formats of printing, right? So if they were going to their wide format press, uh, they were using uh, software like the Zoom Cut Center. Um, for their small format department, they were using the Fiery. Uh, and for their KM1 work, they were, again, doing a lot of this manually in Illustrator. And you heard Mike, it, it became, um, their 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 pre-press team was was kicking butt, getting jobs through as fast as they could, but it just becomes a bottleneck. And uh, each operator in, in their pre-press department was responsible for around fifty jobs per week. Um, so if we take a look at this this challenge, right? It's well, we we can start pretty in in a, in a very simple way, right? We can look at what they were doing before with a, a thirteen by nineteen inch sheet. Um, you've got a, a a widget or a, a postcard or whatever it is that you need to impose. And it's pretty easy to, you know, conclude or, or impose on, you know, one job on one sheet size, right? Um, but if we then move to a larger, uh, you know, we move from the 19 by 13 to now the 29 by 20, the B2 press sheet. Um, and if we take that same uh, job that we were doing on our 19 by 13, you can see that now we've all of a sudden got this, you know, <laughs> a bunch of real estate that we are, are suddenly uh, having to deal with, right? And well, what do we do with this extra space? Well, um, we can take this extra space and, oops, sorry, I went backwards. Uh, we can take this extra space and we can add another job. And uh, now we grab a job. It's, a, it's a, a bit larger. It's got a different quantity count, right? So this this becomes a, a mathematical problem, right? And you're trying to figure out, okay, well, how many are now going to fit up on the sheet? I take job number one. I add a couple more. I take job number two. I impose it, right? And this process is being done 50 plus times per person uh, a day. And it becomes pretty... Uh, well, it becomes a, a quite the bottleneck when you're trying to convert and, and digitally produce your jobs in an efficient way. And then, of course, the problem becomes even more exacerbated when we're looking at different presses, different sheet sizes, different materials, and a lot of orders or a lot of SKUs uh, that are coming per day, right? So then the question is, well, if we've got all of these different uh, we've got this this additional real estate. We've got more jobs that we can fit on a sheet. Uh, how do we do this without imposing or, or creating templates for every single job and every single size? So um, again, the, the problem becomes more complex when we're dealing with large orders, right? And um, in Citycom's case, uh, this 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 was a, a real example from Citycom that they let us share. And it's not uncommon for uh, in in one of their customers uh, on the retail side 
Um, it's not uncommon for a retail store to submit a large order like this of 150 plus items with quantities ranging from, you know, one sign to 5,000 signs um, or postcards or, or whatever it is. And preparing a job like this in pre-press was taking them upwards of about 16 hours of time to impose. So, uh, let, yeah, let's have a listen to what, what Mike says about these, uh, the, these challenges. There were 150 different files, 12 different substrates, and we would we would set all that stuff up manually. So it would literally take, well, back in the day, probably two full days of just layout work uh, to get that ready to produce. <clears throat> so um, their objective, um, when they when they approached us, um, how do we automate the layout preparation? Uh, we want to simplify the process and, and manage additional orders to feed this new press, the the KM one, without adding additional headcount. And um, so they want, you know, they 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 buy this new press. Uh, they want to automate their layout process. They don't want to increase time in pre-press. They want to grow uh, because they have room to grow now with, with the larger press and, and uh, increased productivity. But again, they want to simplify the process uh, and they want to increase quality and, and you know, they don't want to create more human work, which will incur more potential errors. They want to simplify the process, grow and, and try to automate as much as possible. So again, let, let's listen to... Mike, uh, and, and what he mentions are his objectives. We don't want to hire more pre-press people, okay? And I'm, I'm trying to make everything in my company easier so that our quality comes out higher. We know we're going to have problems in five years if, we, if we're not changing the way we do business, okay? Conoco was Oops. offering a, another imposition program. But it, what, what it did more than anything is it told us, hey, we need to be prepared for this B2 sheet size, you know. So we knew we needed something. We looked at Ultimate Impo Strip, Coin Impose. We have a great partnership with DFI. Uh, we run their PACE MIS system. So we, we took a look at metrics, and we had looked at metrics in the past, and it we were talking with them. They saw the bigger picture. You could tell that they want – to uh, develop a lot of great things for metrics, but it just wasn't there yet. And then I was on, I think I came across the Phoenix video on YouTube and I, and I watched it. And at first I was like, this is, this has to be bogus. Like there's no, there's no way that this program works this fast that you're getting these results in seconds. So, uh, the need for, for um, Mike and, and his team at CityCom uh, for a dynamic, you know, like template free solution for imposing uh, in his mind was impossible to find. And, um, you know, we, you heard Mike, if, if we're not if we're not changing now, we're screwed in five years. Right. The, the industry and in, in, in the changes to, in, in advancements in digital uh, print and, and finishing is, is changing so rapidly. We can't continue to do things the way we used to do things, you know. So um, Phoenix provided capabilities out of the box for, for CityCom, uh, as well as offered them the ability to automate in positioning via hot folders and, and through APIs to achieve their goal of, uh, of production automation, which, which you heard Mike has mentioned several times. So um, this is where uh, we introduced CityCom to our AI-driven planning and imposition solution. And with, with Phoenix, really what, what we're trying to do is, is simplify this process of, uh, of, of figuring out the most cost-effective way of, of you know, running and imposing your jobs. So we developed a product to help human planners and help pre-press. And we do that by training uh, Phoenix's AI brain by loading in your production equipment, your production equipment's costs, uh, the speeds of your production equipment, the stocks and the cost of your stocks, your different stock sizes. And then once we've got this information uh, modeled inside of Phoenix, 
um, through our user interface, we simply just plug in our CSV file, uh, which I'm about to walk through here. Uh, your list of orders, once we've modeled your production costs and, and um, stock costs and uh, changeover, et cetera. We load in your uh, data file, which includes things like the substrate and the quantities of each order. And what I'm gonna do first in Phoenix is start by what most commercial printers will do in an offset environment is run a single product per press sheet. We call them self runs many times here in the US on a 40 inch uh, press sheet. And I brought in, you could see these 13 orders over here on the left. I now generated 13 press forms dynamically with Phoenix, right? This isn't that impressive uh, because we just max filled uh, these different uh, postcards in our case here on, on a 40 inch press sheet, one, one, one item per press run. Um, but it is pretty impressive because Phoenix auto computed this, imposed it on the fly and uh, costed the job um, if we were to run it this way on our on our offset press on our 40 inch sheet. You can see it's gonna be 13 hours on press and about $8,000 to run it, um, our, our 13 press runs. But now what I'm gonna do is, this is where the imposition AI brain kind of takes over. So I'm gonna ask Phoenix to uh, aggressively combo against my Indigo 7900 and my CD102 against all my 39 different sheet sizes. And you can see with the click of a button, um, this is what, uh, what, what Mike was referring to on YouTube that he couldn't believe. Um, but when we do this, you can see the number of results, right? There is an infinite number of permutations when we look at just 13 postcards, right? At their different quantities against our 39 different possible sheet sizes against our two presses. Um, the, the, there is an infinite number of ways to impose and, and look at different ways of running different sheet sizes, running some on, on your indigo, some on your offset. Um, and in this case, what Phoenix found out was the most cost effective way to run the job. You can see we went from $8,000 down to $1,000 is to run uh, a combo on your CD102, just one press to run now instead of 13, which we had before running self runs. Phoenix comboed the larger quantity items um, on your offset press. And then on your 19 by 13 inch sheet, auto imposed the items with smaller quantity counts. Um, and then auto computed our print forms uh, and layouts and copy counts of each. So this is where, you know, we're, we're providing this uh, technology at the printer converter planner or, or pre-press fingertips to help them make better, smarter, faster, more calculated decisions when it comes to um, pre-press and, and planning. So after we quickly impose the orders with the AI-driven planning algorithm, uh, Phoenix also creates what you can see on screen here, uh, production reports to help the operators keep track of all their jobs once they're being printed and, and finished. Um, and then let's let's listen to what Mike has to say uh, about uh, Phoenix. Pretty much blew us away that you know you could throw all the all these different files, uh, stocks, quantities at the program, and within seconds you're getting you know hundreds, thousands of different layout options and that that was huge and that's when we weren't even thinking about it at the time but that's when it opened our mind to wait a second we can run our wide format and our small format and our die sub all from the same program and and that just blew us away so you can see with um <clears throat> By implementing Phoenix, we, we, we really addressed uh, Mike's original challenge of what do I do with this extra real estate on my larger sheet size, as well as started tackling uh, the other aspirations that Citicom had um, for uh, standardizing on, on one imposition tool, on reducing errors, and automating uh, you know, not not just their commercial uh, sheet fed digital work, but also all aspects of, of what they do. Because what I'm about to show next is, you know, Phoenix's versatility. We, we work with really the entire uh, print industry. So uh, we have solutions in these same optimization algorithms for our commercial printers. Uh, where Phoenix is being used to dynamically impose flat, both flat and bound work um, with uh, 
uh, without templates or with templates, um, evaluating commercial or digital, uh, reducing changeover costs right on, on your conventional uh, offset presses by, by looking at opportunities to gang and introduce you know, overruns or underruns. Um, to reduce changeover costs, auto calculating like you, you, your creep and your uh, compensation, uh, your creep compensation in, in your lips and your laps for your booklet printing, um, and setting up plan rules to keep items in groups or in strips. So if you're you know digitally converting books uh, on a roll fed digital device, uh, we also have lane in in um, frame optimization algorithms to uh, help our our digital printers dynamic booklet or photo books or yearbook printers uh, impose their books also on a roll, not just sheet fed. And then <clears throat> we've got, uh, of course, customers in, in digital print, uh, digital label print. So um, our customers of the likes with uh, HP Indigo digital label press, Mark Andy digital label press, um, who are using Phoenix to uh, uh, optimize and automate their uh, challenging lane optimization problems on, on digital roles. So, um, you know, Phoenix not only handles, uh, you know, sheet fed in, in commercial work, but also digital labels um, and can understand and, and compare, you know, click base and coverage based ink costing, understanding the difference between, you know, or, or helping our customers understand the difference between digital and conventional print. Um, building intelligent lead-ins and lead-outs in between your SKUs uh, for smart, you know, finishing and, and uh, rewinding equipment. And we're doing the same thing for Folding Garden. Uh, this is this is our bread and butter. This is where we started is, is in the packaging um, carton in, in CAD space. Um, but the same optimization algorithms that we're doing uh, for dynamic and positioning for, uh, you know, square cut or sheet fed work, uh, for commercial, we're doing the same thing with with CAD or or tooling, um, where we're optimizing optimizing tooling, understanding tooling, auto snapping into tooling, um, and computing the most cost effective way of comboing jobs for uh, you know our our packaging or folding carton converters. And then it doesn't stop there. Of course, we uh, take these same, you know, kind of true shade messing algorithms that we've always used in CAD and, and applied this into the large format, you know, sign in, in, in wide format space where we are uh, with a click of a button, our, our customers are, you know, true shade nesting on, on much larger, wider uh, sheets for commercial or for, uh, sorry, uh, large format um, signage type work, gaining jobs on substrates by due dates or priorities. Um, you know, so really smart, intelligent ways of, of automating and handling uh, all of your impositioning needs. Um, and then our most recent uh, interaction with uh, our IoT integration with Zoom Cut Center. You know, Phoenix has always been able to understand, you know, your uh, in, in model, your cost uh, in time that you're going to be on press. So once we uh, are generating all the permutations and different ways of, of imposing your jobs, we understand how many sheets and because you've modeled your speed of, of your digital or conventional printing press, um, we know then how long it's gonna take you to print. The The big question mark for digital finishing was always, well, how long is this gonna take to cut, right? Because it changes for every single uh, potential sheet that you're cutting with a digital table. And um, with Phoenix uh, in our, our recent uh, device integration, IoT integration with Zoomed, um, you can see uh, as we start generating um, these different layouts uh, down at the bottom right here, you can see this pending cutting time might be small on your screen. But uh, in a minute here, what we're doing is as we generate these permutations, we're sending the geometry data to the Zoomed API and getting, uh, there we go, immediate feedback on how long these, you know, as we're, as we're true shape nesting and imposing to optimize your material and your print time. Uh, we then send this information to the cutter and say, hey, how long is this going to take to cut? And then we start further optimizing for the cut. So this is the first time an imposition tool is talking to a device, uh, a digital device via IoT, to start making decisions on how we impose, right? This is the future. This is the future of print. This is the future of, of managing and understanding uh, instantaneously what a digital device uh, a digital production print or finishing device 
uh, is going to do and how long it's going to take. And does it make sense for us to move our work to this equipment or how much is it going to cost or how, you know, how do we estimate this type of job? You know, we're giving transparency and we're, we're, we're giving tools to make this uh, decision making process easier so that, you know, uh, business owners and uh, pre pressing planners can really understand um, and, and start quantifying the decisions that they make uh, before their jobs ever make it to press. And um, yeah, with with the um, uh, our, our, our focus is on and always has been on modern UX UI um, software uh, here at Tilia Labs, and in this really kind of helps us speed up the time that it takes to implement and train our product. So with, with Phoenix, uh, one question our marketing team asked Citicom was, you know, about training and implementation and how it sounds complicated. We use these, these words, buzzwords like IOT and, uh, and, and APIs and, and CSVs and XML and hot folders, but you know, is it, it's, it's really not that hard. Um, and, and we've made it really, you know, we, we've tried to simplify this as much as possible um, by spending a lot of time in our UX and in our design of our software uh, to implement Phoenix in an easy, intuitive way. So let's, yeah, let's just have a listen to what, what Mike said about uh, his process of, of implementing the product at his, at his company. Two days of training and we were up and running. I don't know, I was it even two days? Seemed like a day. Implementation was very fast. I mean, we were using it within the first day that it was installed because it's that simple. Uh, it, again, the program does everything for you. It does everything you want it to do. It, it was instant gratification. So if we look at uh, CityCom's kind of flow chart here, um, Tyler, I started to interrupt see, you. How, yeah. how long, how far are you? Uh, I've got about two more slides. Perfect. Are we, are we good on time? I'm showing, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Six minutes. Uh, so I'm going to just yeah, but we, continue. We are on the last <laughs> session. So we can, we can, we can do a little bit more. That's okay. No worries. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm wrapping up here. Um, yeah, so again, we, we can we can walk through these results in, in the analysis that we did with, with CityCom. Um, if you're if you're interested, please reach out. Uh, we're, we're happy to walk through um, our uh, project that we worked on with CityCom, or, or we have several customers in, in really all kind of spaces of, of uh, print and packaging um, that we can connect with. We we hired ten employees since purchasing the KM1 and Tilia Phoenix last year. Um, just with the amount of work that we've been pushing through the shop. We're processing over 2,000 different jobs a month. That's grown substantially. I haven't gone back and looked at it, but I'm pretty sure we were talking about doing 1,000 jobs a month about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's allowed us to gang up jobs. So we're running on a single sheet. We can be running you know, anywhere from two to seven different jobs depending on what they are. So what we used to, what we used to where we used to run business cards, um, you know, one up on a sheet on a little 13 by 19, we're now able to get, we can, we can get 55 different orders up on a, on a B2 sheet. That's where we've been able to see our job tickets jump so much because it's not taking really any additional time to produce them. It's all, coming off on the same sheet. Great. With that, uh, on behalf of yeah the whole team here at Tilia Labs, we'd, we'd like to thank uh, Inkish and all, all of those who helped behind the scenes in their efforts to, to put this to put this on uh, the USA Smart Factory event um, under these, well, yeah, quite strange circumstances, I'd say. But yeah, thanks for your time and don't hesitate to reach out online. It was uh fantastic uh, presentations, uh, Tyler. Can you close Perfect. your screen sharing? Oh yeah, there yes. you go. Um, I don't know where to start and end. I would like to start maybe saying something that uh, maybe sound a little odd, <laughs> but I will do that anyway. Um, having a client like that, 
and having that kind of interaction in uh, presentations I've never seen before. And uh, cadeaus to you guys, because mm -hmm. that is, again, like uh, engaging with a client and making sure that, that that's put in perspective. Because sometimes if you have like like one person talking, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I get rid, uh, tired of listening to it. But you explain it, he uh, qualifies it. And uh, and I'm pretty sure that this, um, and I, mean, <laughs> I know that when everything at the end of the day, the reason why not one vendor or one software company has world dominance is because it takes time to get world dominance. <laughs> and also because, uh, um, of course, uh, some, uh, some uh, printers obviously have different needs and different budgets and things like that. What, what is, this? I'm, I'm not talking about money, but what type of company, where, where do we start? I mean, is it, is it for, is this, is this for everybody or is it only for the large ones or where do we start? Yeah, uh, that it's a really good question. And, um, you know, obviously, uh, from our point of view, every everybody should have it printer <laughs> in the whole world. Anyone who puts ink on paper, um, can benefit from our products. And I, I say that in a, in a very serious, um, in a very serious manner, you know, when, <clears throat> When, when a, a, a printer converter gets to a point where uh, they purchase new equipment and you want to fully utilize that equipment, um, you know, in, in Citycom's case, they bought a KM1 and they solved a problem. You know, they wanted to grow their company and uh, they wanted to handle more work. But now you've shifted uh, your bottleneck, right? You, you have... You, you could go out there and sell all the print in the world. They were doing a great job selling, um, but they had a bottleneck in production, right? They, they had, they couldn't sell or keep selling as much because uh, they couldn't fulfill their orders, right? And keep their customers happy. So they went and bought this press. Hmm. But yeah, now so, you've the, got so the bottlenecks is becoming a limitation because it's based on how many head counts you have, right? Exactly. So, you know, now, now that you buy and solve one problem, you just kind of shift that problem to feeding this beast. So, uh, you know, if, if there's any, any customer out there, um, who, who's, you know, being hit with that, that type of scenario. Yeah. We want to talk. I mean, there, you know, there, there's ways of growing your company and, and feeding this, this new equipment. Uh, without needing to, you know, grow your headcount, and, and in Citycom's case, they've done just that. If you if you turn it around, because with the knowledge that you gain from having a Phoenix, uh, I would think, and I maybe I've heard that, so maybe I'm not just guessing, but uh, because you can also use it the other way around, right? Like if you have all the jobs already in your in your company, and you want to speculate about what kind of equipment, size wise, speed wise, you can also use it as an analysis tool for buying the right presses for you, right? Yeah, and and you bring up a really interesting um, uh, way that our, our sales team has started to approach um, helping customers ROI this the software, right? Is you know. It, virtually every printer converter knows how much work they've done the last week and they know how many sheets that to literally sit there and cost and, and understand, you know, we can simulate how you ran it and then we can simulate what the algorithm is suggesting. And in, in, in 99, I don't think we've ever ran into a scenario where, um, you know, we haven't saved money, you know, because the human, if you can make that kind of money on, on uh, th those kind of jobs and you have those kind of jobs, it makes sense to do it ASAP, right? But if you are meet, I mean, because, you know, the companies I've been working in, uh, in the printing industry, I mean, of course, a lot of people also do have imposition tools, uh, Impostrip, uh, some of the, of the, uh, the, 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 the imposition tools that, that, that you also mentioned in your presentation. And I was just wondering if you look at, uh, the RI on, going from an existing, not manual imposition, but from an existing, let's say, template-based uh, uh, imposition to, to a Phoenix, for example, do you see the same radical changes in, in uh, cost savings or, or was that just like the, the best example? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, in a lot of cases, moving from a 
you know, traditional imposition tool to Phoenix, um, it it's a completely different way of, of trying to solve a problem, right? Like a, a traditional imposition tool does not have any concept of cost. Mm -hmm. And a traditional imposition tool is a, you know, set up for a template for a single item at a certain size on a, on a certain press with certain That's press marks. That was how we used to do it, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's how I always thought about doing it, right? But um, what, what Phoenix does just completely differently than anything I've, I've ever seen in the industry is it approaches this problem in a, in a completely different way by, by really understanding what a human would think about when they're trying to impose a job or when they're trying to plan production on, on, on their orders. Mm. And it does it in in a way in at a speed that you know a human couldn't do but a human is sitting there and looking at hey i've got you know these presses and this press costs this much an hour to, to change over and it takes about 40 minutes to uh you know move from one job to another job on my offset press and here's my digital press it, it runs at about you know 320 dollars an hour and i've got these different sheet sizes that we could possibly produce on at, at you know and what Phoenix does differently than a traditional imposition tool is it captures that information, similar to what a human thinks about in their brain, mm -hmm. and then starts looking at all of those different permutations, right, without mm -hmm. having to manually touch anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas a traditional imposition tool doesn't understand cost, right? Yeah. And yeah. in order to impose, um, you know, our mindset is, look, give us your costs give us model this information in the software and let it make the decisions right mm -hmm. dynamically. Well, I have two things in, in that perspective. Uh, and I, I will just try to tell both of them or ask them both of them at the same time. So I don't really forget them. Uh, first of uh, I already forgot them. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, one of the things that I would think, I mean, if you look at the Sunt and the IOT integration, uh, I think that's, as you said, that, could easily be seen in the future of of, uh, of uh, print because you have the two ways communication and, and and you optimize everything. But that also it also gives me a question because when you talk about the position, I think that most printers also have that into com into consideration is that you have the right imposition in relation to what binding equipment you have and the timing of the binding equipment. Because if you look at some of the sheets that you presented before, everything in, you know, from what I saw on the screen looked perfect in case of you're using a guillotine and you have like a uh, flat uh, flyers or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a let's say a multi-page uh, product, or if you have to uh, put it in a binder afterwards and, and or de depending on, on the end product, is that something that Tilly Labs also consider in your in your in your imposition things yeah another really good question um <clears throat> so in our most recent version that we released uh we introduced this new concept of what we call things and um things include um really all uh, or being able to model more than just um print, which is what, what we did before, right? We just looked at the equipment uh, of print and the speeds of, of your different printing devices uh, and your stocks. And now Phoenix with, with this most recent uh, version has gotten more intelligent and understands uh, things that happen post print, right? And we call those things things, right? Just like IoT. Um, Internet of Things, things. Uh, there's a chain of events that occur in, in any um, printing company. So you're taking the entire process, so it's not just the sheet size and, and the imposition of it, but also the post-process and the pre-process. I mean, every process that you would need. I mean, if, if a great example, people talk about embellishment, enhancement, things like that. It's also that that sometimes requires <laughs> different perspectives when it comes to you can print on a larger size, then you cut it down, and then you can put it in your digital enhancement, right? Um Cool. It's not because I don't want to hear more about it. It's just because I got a question here. Uh, it's from a person. I don't know his name or her name. She, that person has been along for a long time. Uh, for ink savings, GCR color correction depends on the upstrates. Can Phoenix do? Um, 
I think that we're talking about ink consumption here, right? And and also, uh, I, I, I'm not an expert in this one, but I would sometimes think that that what I hear about, and maybe you can reflect on that. I hear that when you, one of the huge advantages with uh, with Phoenix is also your capabilities with your APIs. So you can also integrate your workflow literally with everything that exists, right? So if what about the color thing? I mean, uh, because that is not your core business yet, at least. Yeah, yeah <laughs> read, can you read the, the question again, Martin? Hmm? Sorry? Can you, can you read the question again? Yeah, sure. Uh, RRCC mm -hmm. is asking for ink savings, GCR slash color correction. Depends on the substrates. Can Phoenix do? Yeah, really good question. Um, <clears throat> so a couple couple of things uh, with ink. With um, our, our introduction of, of devices, we've also extended our modeling of uh, printing equipment. And with uh, both conventional um, devices and digital devices, we've got the ability now to model your ink costs at both a click-based cost and, and a consumption based cost. Perfect. So now Phoenix, as it's running and generating permutations, is not just looking at optimization of your material and your press time, but it's also looking and understanding if we run this on our digital press, this is what it's going to cost in ink. And if we run it on our uh, offset press, this is what it's going to cost in ink. And if you run it on this digital press versus this digital press on this sheet size, you know, um, with these different items <laughs> mixed together, this is what your ink cost is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, another really nice um, or, or another reason we we added this was so that customers, um, it's big on like the HP Indigo side where they'll run in what's called enhanced productivity mode, EPM mode, where they're, they it's are the doing a, a gray color replacement. They're essentially replacing the black channel with cyan, yeah. magenta, and yellow. Mm -hmm. So now we're saving a click, right? Mm -hmm. And when we're saving a click, we want to aggregate all of those labels that are saving clicks so that we're not accidentally imposing an item uh, that has isn't running in is, you know uh, EPM mode, um, but rather gathering all the items that are uh, running in EPM mode, so that we're saving you know ink costs, not just mm. you know uh, press time, but also ink costs. Um, so that that is that is new. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that person asked. But um, I, I I have an addendum to that one because mm -hmm. uh, as I understand from RCC, I think he works in the newspaper industry, and and I think that what he also refers to is that you have I mean because you have coverage, but coverage doesn't say much about the substrate. If you have right. a, a newspaper and you run with a very low screening. Uh, then your your ink consumption would be considerably lower than if you're running on a high screening, right? Yeah. So in th this again, Morton, going back to the presentation with IoT, this is what we envision, right? We right now we're we're working with um, cutting hardware manufacturers for digital finishing, uh, as well as guillotine cutters to understand and model guillotine cutting costs, right? But um, what we've done in our version seven is each product has the ability uh, for you to feed in the coverage and define the coverage percentages of each one up and how much uh, ink is going to be used on that particular one up. And that relates to the, the substrates as well? Well, you can um, each product that we import into Phoenix has a definition of quantity, uh, the, the material that it's running on. Uh, and it's got a, a, well, a ton of properties, but one of, of which is, is ink coverage. Mm. And you can imagine an IoT integration where uh, during import or, or by simply right clicking uh, on a product and saying, hey, tell me what this coverage is going to translate to uh, coverage wise if I uh, am running you on this indigo or on this press, right? Mm -hmm. We will never, you know, uh, I shouldn't say never, but we don't have any aspirations of, of creating a, a, you know, a, a, a digital rip, right? No. But there's a ton of digital rips out there that are driving these digital so, processes. So they could be a device and they could feed back information because that is another thing I can tell you that I spoke to a guy that was running a, uh, 
uh, wrote to Gravor and the web offset printing in out of Barcelona. And he's, he said to me that they got a job where they, I think they literally saved more than a hundred thousand dollars on inks, turning it from a, uh, a traditional conventional, uh, screening to a, uh, uh, uh to some other kind of screening, an AM, uh, going from an AM to an FM screening, basically. So, mm -hmm. of course, it, it doesn't maybe have such a big impact on smaller jobs and when you're gang small jobs and if you use uh, click-based cost models and things like that. But, of course, if you have in the millions of uh, copies which are still produced, right, then, of course, uh, that influences. And, and as I said, RRCC, uh, who asked this question, I, I believe that he comes from the newspaper industry because a lot of the questions he had both yesterday and today has been relating to kind of newspaper business, right? But, you know, that was really awesome. Um, you did this uh, fantastic thing with uh, with Sunt. Uh, is that just the first um, integration from that perspective, or do you anticipate more devices to be uh, here? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like I said, we're Telia Labs is a software company, right? And uh, only a software company. We're not we're not related or, or tied or owned by any hardware manufacturer. We're we're very agnostic in the industry. We want to maintain uh, want to maintain um, being agnostic. You know, our our vision is, uh, and and like I said in the presentation, the future is IoT, right? Like digital is the hardest thing to quantify because it changes for every single potential frame, every label, every printed piece has a different cost, right? It's not, it's not as predictable as like a sheet fed offset press that runs at a very static pace yeah. that puts down a very static amount of, of, of ink in, in most cases, that's easy to model. Digital mm -hmm. requires IoT. And mm -hmm. uh, in, in the, the color conversation that we were just having, mm -hmm. um, that is what we envision, right? We envision that we will connect not only to, you know, digital cutting tables, laser cutting tables, guillotine cutting tables, but, but also directly with the digital print um, manufacturers so that we can start providing the industry with, with tangible, you know, ways of, of figuring out, do I run this digital or do I run this conventional? Mm -hmm. Because we can't just say, hey, at 5,000 sheets, I'm going conventional, right? No, no, that's, no. That, that's, that's, that's too easy. Too, too too easy. Of thumb. But you know what? 5,000 5, sheets may cost significantly more to run it or offset versus your, your extremely now fast digital press that you know you don't know right and, until you start connecting and, and grabbing data from these devices so we do we we that is our future but going uh uh with with our release and first introduction of of devices zoomed is is um is our, our first partnership and, and we're so thankful for and, and happy of, of partnering with them they're such a great company such an open company to work with uh they've been fantastic so at least something is open out of Switzerland. That's what you're saying, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why you can't, you can't they, see. Have, they have a great API. In, yeah, but you can't in, see uh, the bank accounts. You can't see anything like that. <laughs> so I'm just saying that. No, sorry. That was just a joke. Uh, Tyler, uh, as usual, it was uh, fantastic to talk to you. It was uh, fantastic to hear about uh, where you're heading with, uh, with uh, not only Phoenix, but with uh, Tele Labs as a company. I appreciate your ever support and uh, thank you very much for participating. I'm sure a lot of people will like this session uh, in the replays. So uh, yeah, thank right. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks for inviting us, Morton. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thanks for all, all, all the work from the Inkish team. Thank you very much. Yep. See you.